This is a PSA. If there is any genetic problem in your family or you are concerned about some kind of condition or a birth defect or whatever, and you're going to be starting a family eventually, please go for genetic counseling before you get pregnant, um, preconception. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. It's I'm in here and I'm filming another week in my life as a genetic counselor. I make these videos a few times a year. If you've been on my channel before, you know that I'm a prenatal genetic counselor, mostly prenatal. That's actually about to change very soon. So I'll talk about that at some point in this video. But I usually like to make this video so I can show you guys what kinds of cases I see throughout the week, what I do on my day to day as a GC, because when I was interested in the career, there was nothing like this online. Um, I don't actually know if there are other creators that are making content like this specific to genetic counseling. I have a lot of information about what a GC is, how to get into school, what grad school is like. I actually started vlogging when I was in, when I started my second year of grad school. So I'll link all that information up for you guys. It'll also be in the description if you're interested. I do mostly prenatal and a little bit of preconception as well. Very soon I will be learning cancer, which I'm kind of nervous about um but we'll go into that a little bit more at some point either in this video or a future video um it is the end of the day it's monday i'm just taking a little break and i just made some more tea because it's actually really cold um for august in toronto it's weird so we're going through some i don't know the weather's been moody but it's like a good tea day i still have like 45 minutes to go i'm trying to see like what else i can do in that time maybe just some more admin things i actually do have to send a fax as well um so today i had two patients and the first patient i had um was let me look at my log book i do not even remember which is wild oh yes i had a case this morning um a prenatal case and there was a atypical sex chromosome finding on the NIPT or NIPS testing, non-invasive prenatal testing. Um, and this one, the lab said they suspected it to be a maternal X chromosome abnormality, um, which is quite interesting. I haven't had a case like that. Um, and mom was not interested in doing diagnostic testing in the pregnancy because NIPT is screening at the end of the day. Declined amnio, but we're going to do maternal chromosomes. To see if she actually does have a chromosome abnormality um otherwise it could just be like an incidental finding if, if she really does have something she's been very healthy um no concerns with her health or pregnancies or anything like that um and then that was in the morning and this afternoon i had a case a preconception case but they're actually pregnant this happens sometimes while people are waiting for like their preconception appointment they actually end up conceiving within that time and then when i meet with them they're like oh by the way i'm actually pregnant um which is fine like it just means that their results will come back quicker um so i met this couple and they have a daughter with hemoglobin h disease which is a specific kind of alpha thalassemia and so just kind of talking about recurrence risk doing carrier testing for the parents things like that there's a lot of administrative stuff behind the scenes which as a student you don't even know about and then when you start working you're like oh my gosh it's a lot of work um but you usually have like support staff that will help you with all that um so i just sent the requisitions for i already sent the morning patient her requisitions that are documented all of that sent her doctor a fax telling them about our plan and then this afternoon's patient i just sent them the requisitions as well i documented and now i have to send their doctor a fax to just give them an update on our plan and then i'm doing triage so um, in our clinic the gcs the prenatal gcs we do our own triage um, because we're we're pretty specific in terms of what we accept and then we actually also like have a lot of control over our schedule but every clinic will be different um, so i'm doing triage today nothing new has come in since the last time i did it a few hours ago and then i'm going to I don't know we'll see but something will come up before i'm done at 4 30 today i do have some admin related stuff so nothing too exciting and then tomorrow i think i have no patience which is great because yeah i have no patience it might be a less busy week i don't know you just never know with prenatal basically i slot in like my non-pregnant patients like a couple months in advance and then the prenatal ones kind of fill in the gaps 
Um, so I don't know exactly what my week is going to look like, but I have two to three like non-pregnant cases that I see per week. I used to say I did 90% prenatal, like 10% general. That's not really the case anymore. It just kind of goes up and down. Um, but yeah, nothing for tomorrow, which is good because I'm actually going in office tomorrow. So I do a hybrid role right now. Um, so I'm at home three days a week and then I go into the office for two days a week and then the in office days usually it's more admin stuff paperwork like scanning things things that I can't do remotely um so it's nice to have a clear day to actually get all those things done so I'm sure I'll have lots to do tomorrow as well um but yeah that's it for today I will catch up with you guys tomorrow after I don't know maybe at lunch maybe after kind of depends on how the day goes Hi everyone, I'm embarrassed to say I forgot to vlog yesterday, I'm kind of out of it, not doing it as much anymore. Um, but today's Wednesday, I'm working from home clearly. I also don't wear these clothes when I'm seeing patients, just to let you know. I saw I had a patient this morning, I was wearing a nicer shirt, and then I went on a walk at lunch, so I put on a t-shirt, and I have no patients this afternoon, so I have kept my t-shirt on. Um, but yesterday, I have to actually go back and look at what I did, because I do not remember. I had no patients yesterday, um, but obviously a lot of administrative work that I do on a regular basis. I use one of these like weekly clients planners anything that's happening in the future i keep it there as well for example like when my patients are having amnio and then i have a reminder to call out their qfpcr first result the next day when people are having ultrasounds when i'm doing triage those days even my vacations um conferences things like that and so yesterday let's see what i did um i did oh since we do our own triage we also do our own stats so it's just more for like information sake um but we keep track of how many referrals we're accepting what kinds of referrals we're accepting um what else how many we're declining how many are we seeing with the doctors geneticists how many are we seeing on our own that kind of thing what percentage of our referrals are high risk versus general um so all of those things and the person who usually does that is on maternity leave so i've been doing it for the past year a little bit over a year um and i don't mind doing it i actually like finding out all this information um it also helps you like from a bird's eye view to sometimes every day can feel like a lot like oh i'm so busy today i'm doing a lot but then you look at it and everything actually balances out throughout the year so it made me feel better but i don't know if it makes all my colleagues feel better to just know like that everything is normal like nothing is normal in prenatal like there's no like set rules or like no like pattern necessarily um, but everything does balance out in the end so that was interesting to see um, I had some amnio paperwork to do, so putting together requisitions. I had to follow up with the Ministry of Health for a couple of things. Basically in Ontario, so it's very specific to where I work, but let me start by saying in Canada, our healthcare system is different than it is in the US. If you're from the US, it's going to be a very different system. I trained in the US, very different than what it's like in Canada and Ontario. The majority of people have what we call like Ministry of Health coverage, so we call it OHIP, which I think stands for Ontario Health Insurance Policy or something like that i don't know what it is but we have like health cards everybody has health card and there are some tests that are not available in ontario anything available in ontario is covered by the health insurance things that are outside of ontario we have to get special permission to make sure the ministry will cover it so people are not self-paying for tests um we don't actually arrange any self-pay tests mostly you're either eligible or you're not eligible and whatever you're eligible for the Ministry of Health will cover it. So basically every once in a while, not every once in a while, very often actually, since genetics is so complex and rare, a lot of the tests that we order, we have to do them in different countries. So the majority of the time we're sending it to US labs, but sometimes we send to European labs and stuff as well. Um, things that are not readily available in Ontario. Um, we can even send to other provinces, but Ontario tends to have like the most robust 
genetic testing labs. Um, so honestly, I do this very often, but we have to apply to the ministry to send out testing to a U.S. lab, for example, um, anything that's not offered in Ontario. So I had two of those applications to do um, yesterday, so I did those, and they're very easy. It's, it's not like a lot of work to do them. Um, and it's honestly a very great program because even if it's not available to us locally, we can still get the testing covered free of charge for the patient. So I did that yesterday and then yeah, more requisitions. I started working on our mosaic embryo policy. So I don't think I've talked about this before, but in prenatal, sometimes we get referrals from fertility clinics that have transferred a mosaic embryo. So the couple would have had like PGT done on their embryos um, prior to transferring for pregnancy. And sometimes people um, transfer a mosaic embryo, so an embryo that has a combination of normal and abnormal cells, um, because not always will somebody get a euploid cell or the euploid embryos don't like implant for a pregnancy, it's not successful or whatever the case. Is. so for whatever reason the cards have just fallen where I end up getting a lot of mosaic embryos um, I think I've had like since I started oh, seven mosaic embryo referrals whereas everybody else probably had like one or two um, not that I'm an expert by any means but um, in our clinic we are very independent as genetic counselors we do not work with our doctors on a regular basis we have these policies so it's basically an agreed upon step-by-step -step scenario for common referrals and so we all just follow the policy we see the patients on our own we do everything on our own essentially which I love I love having that independence it's not the same in every Every clinic it's not the same in every specialty um, but I have noticed there's been an uptake in these mosaic embryo cases and I thought it would be um, a good idea to have like an agreed upon set of guidelines that we would you know share with every mosaic embryo case that comes in so the idea is that no matter who no matter which GC the case would be triaged to everyone is being offered the same test or being counseled the same way um, so I brought it up I proposed making a policy for it and then I also offer to do some of the legwork um, there are very clear guidelines from the um, obstetric society of Canada uh, the Canadian obstetric society so it's not like I'm doing a lot of research into this um, but it would be good to have it like written and signed off so that we're all doing the exact same thing so I spent a very I spent whatever time I had like very quickly looking into that it's not done yet at all um, and I think that's pretty much it and then this morning um, I had a patient it was a preconception case they have a child with a de novo chromosome deletion so the child was seen by our clinic um, fairly soon after birth because one of their doctors ordered a microarray from them and on the microarray they found that there's actually a pathogenic deletion on this chromosome that can explain the child's features and symptoms um, so that was a year ago and the child needed to be seen by us again in follow-up the parents were referred separately because they want to grow their family so they wanted to know more about like genetic testing options what that would look like either things like IVF or you know prenatal diagnosis all that so I met with them alongside one of our geneticists um, just because the geneticist was meeting the daughter and then I was meeting the parents so I did that this morning and then I called out a positive cancer result um, so I'm starting I think I mentioned this earlier I am starting to see more cancer patients in the next few months um, but sometimes we get like we get cases where it's like familial variant testing so I don't really need to like learn a lot about the cancer side of things kind of just like okay it's 50 chance you have it or not um, so I called out my first positive cancer result this morning it was very quick it was like one or two minutes um, it's for a cancer syndrome gene that's associated with pheo I don't know what I say it's pheocyto paragangliomas and pheocytochrome I feel like I'm saying this wrong let me see I know they're called pheos pheochromocytoma there you go pheochromocytoma and paragangliomas um, so these are a specific type of tumors so this gene is associated with those tumors so I called out the results but the geneticist will meet with them and talk about the diagnosis that's not within my scope um, so I did that and then I just need to put together some requisitions for the preconception couple that I saw this morning. I have to call a few more people. I still have like two and a half hours to do all of this today. Um, and then I have a result. I'm waiting on um, a QFPCR result. So I had a patient that didn't amnio yesterday. So I'm waiting to call out their results. Hopefully it's normal. That would be great if it was. Um, yeah, just a lot of calls to make requisitions to do, people to email, just the usual. Honestly, I just finished a webinar 
um, which you saw me do. Um, it was from the National Society of Genetic Counselors giving us an update on like their DEIJ progress. Um, so that was on in the background. It was hard to, to fully pay attention to that because I have other things to do, but it was on in the background. I caught some of it. Tomorrow I'm also working from home, which is nice. I tend to eat a little bit healthier when I work from home. I go on walks during my lunches and like, I just, I don't know, it's not, there's pros and cons to working from home versus being in office, but um, that's it for today. I have rambled for long enough. This video is going to be very long. It's just Wednesday. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy these videos. Like, please let me know if these are helpful for you. I'm sure when I start doing like actual cancer, it will change things up a little bit. Um, and you guys will get more types of things that I see. I just got to give out normal results from an amnio and they were so happy. It's literally the best feeling to like, just like change someone's life with those few words um obviously when things are opposite and you're not giving good news like it's not the same feeling but giving good news to somebody and just feeling the relief like through the phone is immeasurable like best part of my job for sure and then it's even better when somebody wants to know like the sex and you tell them and they're like genuinely so happy obviously sex gender is a whole different conversation so i usually like i i pick my words very carefully when i say things um but yeah just a very good way to almost end off my day i still have an hour left to go more admin stuff but yeah it makes it all worth it everything that we're doing It's nearing the end of the day. It's like 4 15 p.m. I got my kombucha in hand. Wrapping up on my day. Thought I would tell you guys what I've been up to. I've had a busy day, but no patience. So this week is like kind of a lull. Um, and it's interesting because I never know when I start vlogging if it's gonna be a busy week or if it's going to be more admin related stuff. Um, I had a lot of catching up to do I needed this week because um, as I mentioned earlier, I also do like general preconception non-pregnant cases and because I do both the prenatal ones always bump everyone else out of the water because they're such high priority so I had a lot of things to catch up on in terms of like calling results and doing letters and things like that um so today let me see what I did I had to review a case that I'm seeing tomorrow for preconception um it's not preconception it's a general case um I'll tell you about it after I meet with the person tomorrow I called a patient um, that I met last year so sometimes in prenatal like our conversations our relationships can span a very long period of time um it's actually also true for like other specialties as well but usually basically like when somebody has something happened in a pregnancy and we're testing for it we find out the reason usually in subsequent pregnancies we see them as well which is a nice thing like i actually do enjoy like catching up with people and typically giving good news the second third fourth time around um but this case i called this patient I actually wasn't able to get in touch with them so i'm waiting for them to contact me back um but i met them last year literally a year ago and they had a pregnancy with ultrasound anomalies the pregnancy was ended um and they did genetic testing and the genetic testing came back normal like just the basic genetic testing um they decided to have an autopsy and we just just got the autopsy report back a few weeks ago the autopsies take a very long time um so i got the report back i reviewed it with our geneticist and there is additional testing that we can offer them so i was calling the couple just to give them a heads up that we got the report back and ask if they're interested in learning more about testing options most people are interested in learning more about options because they want to try to conceive again and they kind of want to see like What's the chance for this to happen again? Like, can I prevent it? Things like that. So I'm waiting for them to call me back. Um, I also called someone that I met almost two years ago, um, which is wild, like just for me to call out of the blue, but essentially I did carrier testing for them on a variant that was likely pathogenic at the time. And um, it came back, the lab actually issued a new report that said it's no longer a likely pathogenic. It's actually been downgraded to a VUS or variant of uncertain significance. Um, and so I just called them to give them a heads up that it's been downgraded. You're not really a carrier of this condition anymore. Um, but they were already at low risk of having this be a problem because they're, we ordered testing for the partner at the time and the partner was normal. Um, so just kind of more of a heads up. It was like a one minute conversation. Then I had to call someone else 
who I did carrier testing for as well. The couple was at risk of having a baby with sickle cell disease. Um, so I did like DNA testing for the couple and um, the baby is not affected, which was great news. Um, but one of the parents has both sickle and then alpha, silent alpha trait, alpha thalassemia trait. And so I had to call them and kind of discuss that, um, what like that thalassemia part of it was because sickle they already knew. And then I called, I called another patient who had um, ultrasounds in the pregnancy after having a high nuchal translucency measurement or an increased nuchal translucency. And then um, they had like their level two anatomy ultrasound and a feel echocardiogram. So I kind of just like wrapping up that case, like all the ultrasounds came back normal. They don't want to proceed with any other testing, wrapping that up, which was great. And then my last call of the day, it was for a preconception couple. So they have two genetic conditions in their family and it's been kind of like a nitty gritty to figure out how to offer them testing in a future pregnancy. So all of their testing was done in a previous, in their home country. Um, and then they came here and they're trying to have more children. They have a child with a genetic condition and then they had a previous pregnancy with another genetic condition so they're carriers they're both carriers of two different genetic conditions at least um so i was trying to figure out like if in a future pregnancy would we need to have like parents parental carrier status documented would we like kind of just to make sure that when they get pregnant where are we going to send the sample and can it be done in a timely fashion we've actually been hitting a few bumps in the road for them because one of the conditions that i thought we could test for in ontario um it's actually not testable because the lab's technology would not be able to detect like a deletion or duplication of the gene they would only be able to do sequencing of the gene so we actually can't test for that here we'd have to send it out of country which i talked to you guys about earlier in this vlog um so that's one thing and then when i reached out to the out of country lab they said the report that was done in their other country um that's not clear enough for them to like be able to repeat testing for a future like relative or a future pregnancy um so now we want to repeat testing for their child that has a genetic condition and then also do testing for the parents for the other genetic condition um it's getting very complicated but whatever I'm, I'm glad they referred to us before conceiving like i always tell everyone this is a psa if there is any genetic problem in your family or you are concerned about some kind of condition or a birth defect or whatever and you're going to be starting a family eventually please go for genetic counseling before you get pregnant um preconception because that will just give you a lot more time and your providers a lot more time to figure things out it's going to be much less stressful than when you're already pregnant and there are like tight timelines or just like decisions have to be made very quickly about different tests and when to do them and everything so that's my psa and when like it just is a lot better for you and for your providers to have all this information beforehand and to have a clear plan when you actually do get pregnant if this is something that you need to be worried about so anyways all of that was done today it doesn't seem like a lot when i'm sitting here talking about it but it literally took me like all day to do these things um and tomorrow is friday and i actually have no patience tomorrow either um but i'm gonna be back in the office so i have some like paper stuff to do like i mentioned earlier printing stuff scanning stuff um and i will be writing a lot of patient letters tomorrow so that's also something that gets put on the back burner i know different clinics are set up differently some gcs have like carved out time in their schedule where they have like an admin day or an admin week like kind of on a rotating schedule um our clinic is just not like that and that's fine like everyone just has like a different way of doing things um so when we have these lulls is when we are like catching up on calling out results for non-urgent cases doing patient letters and the letters to me like honestly are not super important because the patient already knows about the results their provider already has been faxed a copy of the report it's just kind of just documented at the end um, i'm not super behind because we did have a lull last month as well or was it two months ago it was kind of like two months ago we had a lull and i caught up on a lot of them um but it's never ending so all the results that i've just called out they all need to be documented in patient or doctor letters so all that will be done tomorrow and then it's the weekend and i'm actually really excited um for this weekend because i have lots planned but this vlog is not about my life it's about me my job and my job is part of my life but it's not my whole life um but i do vlog other stuff too so if you guys want to see about my life in general what i'm doing 
on a regular basis you can watch those vlogs if you don't want to that's completely fine you can still keep watching my gc content <laughs> guys it's actually sunday i was having too much fun friday and saturday to actually vlog what i did at work but i have my planner with me so i'll tell you guys what i did at work on friday but honestly it was a quite frustrating day like i was a lot of admin related stuff which i guess is a theme of this video i don't know if any of my previous videos have shown like a lot of administrative tasks that gcs have to do and like i said depending on where you work you might have like more support for these tasks or less support from like other staff like a lot of people have genetics assistance genetic counseling assistance um, that can help you with some of these things and we do have support like from our secretaries and we have assistants and stuff um, but there are some things that you just have to do like as a GC I'll start off with telling you about the one patient that I had actually on Friday they have a family history of uh, genetic change that increases the risk of cardiomyopathy so um, because I do like general cases I do see like a wide range of indications and this person it was just just like family history of this genetic variation and this gene that leads to like dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, ARVC, different types of cardiac conditions. And so they want to test themselves to see if they would need like any additional screening or monitoring um, and so it was pretty easy the entire appointment was probably like 20 minutes max and the majority of that was me taking their family history so we did have some records um, from the relative that was already tested so I had like the actual genetic test report and then I had like a provider letter so it included some of the family history but obviously I wanted to do it all for this patient so kind of drawing out the family history asking them about their own health and then offering them genetic testing and then when the result comes back it'll only be for that one familial variant it'll either be positive or negative i will call them if it's positive then they would meet with a geneticist and then they would have a follow-up um, with them with consultation to kind of discuss management next steps that kind of thing if it's negative then they never have to speak to us ever again hopefully fingers crossed never again um, so that was the one case so after I met with the patient I had to document that I met with them and documentation you'll probably hear from a lot of counselors like the bane of our existence um, so is like making requisitions, being of our existence. Um, in the US, I know it's a lot of like going back and forth with insurance companies. It's not like that in Ontario, which is nice um, because everybody, typically, majority of people have like the same coverage. Um, so yeah, after I met with them, I had to document. Then I had to fax their doctor saying that we're doing the test for them. And then I also had to send the patient the requisition so they can go for blood work. So all of that I had to do. Okay, so there's actually two situations that I'm currently dealing with um, that were the most annoying thing throughout honestly this like past week in the past few weeks actually um so we've been running into a lot of issues like with delays from labs so obviously in prenatal cases like everything's urgent we hope to get results back in like two to three weeks right so the patient can like get the results make decisions about the pregnancy or just like everything is just urgent right and we've been running into a lot of issues where labs are like causing a lot of delays in these results so one of the situations i had tried i've been communicating with the lab back and forth like for a long time and it's unclear as to why there's a delay has a report been issued has it not been issued and the patient is like very very anxious so i called her to kind of explain the situation and then i had to escalated to my manager because I was like I am not getting anywhere like I need this person's results um so we'll probably find a solution for that in the next week and then the second was there's one specific lab I'm not gonna name names but every time we've sent them a prenatal sample it just like fails quality control for whatever reason and they request more samples so this entire summer I've been dealing with this lab just like not giving us results and just variety of reasons like it's not even like sometimes yeah prenatal samples are a little bit more difficult to work with like that that's not even an issue i'm having issues with blood samples as well which is like anyways i'm getting really into niche here um but a lot of our job is like the advocating part of for patients like communicating with different labs communicating with different providers and like that can 
be very taxing so even though it looks like I had no patience on Friday like it looks like I might be doing nothing like I'm actually doing a lot um that's like the frustrating part about being a GC like I think the more I make these videos you're probably going to hear a more like well-rounded approach like when I first started I was very excited I still am very excited I love my job my dream job for sure but there's like things that are frustrating about the role or just like not even about the role just the healthcare system in general um that we kind of have to deal with and prenatal obviously is an added stressor related to all of that so dealing with both of that calling the patients letting them know about the delay and like obviously they're unhappy i'm unhappy like we're just trying to like make we're just trying to get the information to them as soon as possible and that's not always possible out of my control um and then i don't even know what else i did i tried reaching a patient but i couldn't reach them to give out a result for this is actually an interesting case um so i tried calling this patient to follow up with them but i couldn't get a hold of them essentially they had um an intrauterine fetal demise which just means like the they went for like an ultrasound and there was no heartbeat and it's like quite late in the pregnancy like beyond 20 weeks um genetic testing was done on the remains from the pregnancy and there was an abnormal microarray which just means that there was either too much or too little of a certain chromosome and we usually do parental testing after that to see like does one of the parents have the same thing like to understand what's the chance for this to happen again and this microarray finding was pathogenic so that just means it is disease causing like there are some microarray changes that are benign and some that are like uncertain this one is pathogenic so we did parentals and then um, one of the parents actually has the same uh, finding on the microarray and so it's very interesting now we'll have to meet with a geneticist they did have some features related to that area of the chromosome so I was pretty suspicious that we were gonna confirm that it was them that had the same finding um, but now that they did they'll have to meet with the geneticist so I've been trying to reach them and then obviously that changes things for them in terms of like pregnancy planning and testing in a future pregnancy because the, one of the parents has this there is a 50% chance for it to happen again um, and what they want to do with that information is up to them like they have the same thing and they're living but with a lot of genetic differences there's usually a range in features so with any condition really like you can never predict exactly what the outcome will be like like there could be mild cases there could be more severe cases we basically have like a list of possible symptoms or um, health conditions a person might encounter and then we just say like this is a possibility there is like a little bit of uncertainty with this um but then it's up to the person like how they feel about that uncertainty so i'll probably try calling them again in the next week and then other than that honestly i just did a lot of printing and scanning and more administrative administrative related stuff one of my colleagues is on vacation so i had to call out some results for her as well and that's pretty much it um, I don't know if this week was a little bit more boring compared to my other vlogs. If you want to see more like patient focused content and maybe check out one of my other vlogs, you just never know in prenatal. Like I never know when I pick up the camera on Monday, what kind of week it's going to be. And there have been scenarios actually in the past where I've tried to vlog and realized that the week was not as exciting as some of my other ones. So I didn't bother like finishing that vlog. Um, but this one I just decided to do all Monday through through Friday so you can see kind of more behind the scenes like even when you're a student when you're rotating with the GC like you're only really involved in mostly like the patient cases because the whole point of rotation is for you to get a certain number of cases and like you know expand your horizons with indications and stuff like that um, but GCs don't usually show you all the stuff they're doing behind the scenes um, also because it takes longer to show a student that you're doing all that stuff behind the scenes um, so you mostly only get to see the patient interactions and then obviously when you are maybe like working as a GCA or a GA in a clinic you might see a little bit more of that but there's still a lot that the GC does that you're not necessarily involved with so I hope you guys got a better idea of what the role looks like in general again this is just my experience a lot of people will have different experiences depending on their actual specialty depending on how much support they have what kind of support staff they have their role not everybody does clinical as well so some people never speak to patients some people never talk to providers like it all just depends on your role specifically I am planning, I've been planning this for years, I just have never gotten the chance to get around to it, um, but I would love to do a series on this channel where I interview different kinds of genetic counselors, so obviously you guys know a lot about prenatal now. I do have colleagues that do fertility, I have colleagues that do like lab based stuff, obviously cancer based stuff, so whatever you guys want to see let me know in the comments below and I'll see if I can get someone to do it for me, it's just like a lot of people 
I have this fear that people don't want to be on YouTube and maybe that's not true. Maybe I just need to ask people and they'll be okay and open to it. I have been filming now for four years so everybody in my life knows that I do this on the side for fun um, and so maybe they'll be more open to doing it but yeah if you guys have a specific specialty that you want me to interview or know a little bit more about let me know in the comments below. When I am finally getting around to doing this I'll probably do like a Q&A box like on my Instagram and maybe even on YouTube um, to figure out what kind of questions you want me to ask that person and hopefully it'll be interesting for you guys as well if you're interested in the career or if you're already a GC student and you kind of just want to know more about the specialties and I'll probably get people that are not only based in Canada or Ontario like kind of a lot of people that I know are based in the US so that could be interesting too anyways I talk a lot I'm an oversharer clearly I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you want to see more GC related content I'll have my link for the playlist in the description but I'll also put it in this video as well subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content related to my life as a genetic counselor my everyday life as a vlogging person a vlogging person a vlogger is that what you call it a fashion person fashion related content all of these things I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one thanks for watching Bye.